Hello, welcome to Hersco Online. This is the second part in the series on wound healing. In part one, we looked at the total contact cast. The total contact cast is an excellent way to close a wound. However, it is quite time consuming. It takes a big commitment from both the practitioner and the patient as weekly appointments are needed and it can take up to a half an hour to reapply the cast each time. Before we consider the AFOs that may be applied to help heal open wounds, let's first consider the biomechanics of gait itself. In the normal gait cycle, the heel strikes the ground first. From there, weight is transferred to the plantar foot. Then as the gait progresses and the line of progression makes it towards the forefoot, pressure is transferred to the medial side of the forefoot and then in the propulsive phase of gait, toe-off occurs at the medial distal hallux. In diabetic patients, there is a process called glycosylation that can occur. This is actually an irreversible cross-linking of collagen and keratin. The effect of this is that you get stiff tissue which is seen in the skin, the tendons and in the joints themselves. What it means is that the skin can become brittle and friable and subject to ulceration. But also at the joints, there is limited range of motion. We can see this in specifically the ankle joint. If there's limited joint motion, what will happen is as the weight crosses over the ankle and the patient begins to transfer weight forward, heel lift will occur too early and will end up with increased forefoot pressure and the possibility of ulceration. The combination of limited joint mobility leading to higher forefoot pressure and the neuropathy which tends to be seen in the diabetic patients will eventually lead to ulceration. This is the reason that AFOs can be very effective because by locking motion at the ankle and preventing dorsiflexion, we can reduce forefoot pressure. A rigid ankle brace of some sort and a smooth cam or rocker sole will help change the pressure patterns, possibly shorten the stride, but effectively prevent peaks or increases in forefoot pressure for the patient. One inexpensive way to provide an AFO for these patients is with removable cast walkers. These are off-the-shelf solutions and they can have removable inlays that can be custom fitted and given depressions to offload specific bony prominences or areas of localized pressure. Another advantage of a removable cast walker is that the foot can be accessed so the wound can be checked, it can be dressed and debrided quite easily and the same removable cast walker can be used over the course of the treatment. However, there's one difficulty. With the removable cast walker, the patient also has the ability to remove the device themselves. In this case, you need to make sure that the patient is going to be compliant with your treatment. In more severe cases, you can use a crow walker. This is essentially a rigid, custom-made polypropylene boot. It's a shell that protects the foot, reduces or locks range of motion at the ankle, and allows for an extra depth inlay, which can be relieved and given depressions and pads in order to take the pressure off specific areas of the foot. In one of my favorite studies on removable cast walkers and compliance, patients were given a removable cast walker with a pedometer inserted into the device itself, and they were also given a waist-worn pedometer. It was discovered that the removable cast walker had only been worn 28% of the time. One way to get the benefits of the total contact cast without having to reapply the fiberglass is to take a removable cast walker and then seal it in some simple way using something like cable ties or even plaster splints. That way you can easily access the wound when you need to check on it and yet you don't have to go through the time-consuming process of the total contact cast. Thank you for joining Hersco Online.